Oh boy. Being recorded. Hey everybody, rolling in. Hi everyone. Hello, hello. Can see the Hi purchase. Bobby. Oh. Hi Trent. Hi. Hello. Hello, hello everybody. We're waiting for the room to fill up for a little bit. Yeah, no, yeah, we do this. <laughs> we do the same thing for a bit. We kind of vamp for we vamp for uh, five minutes and just um, ask where everyone's coming from. You want to do that? Is it is it on brand, Trent? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, do, uh, uh, do people have comments, ability uh, in here? Yes. Yeah, yeah perfect, yeah. Let us know where you're coming from, what time it is. From, and then we scream out city names like we're crazy people. Whittier, okay. Ray, oh. San Diego, NYC, yes. San Diego. Nice. Or Indonesia. Boston. 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 Iran. Egypt. Nice. Indonesia. Bahamas. Man. Can you fly who's me out there? Can I live with who's, you? Who's staying up past midnight right now? Anybody? <laughs> well, I saw at 12 30. Oh, man. Egypt. Welcome, yeah. everybody, tuning in from uh, all over the world. Bienvenidos. Thank you so I much for joining us. Rise up, folks. Bobby, Trent, we're still waiting on Frank, but we're going to get this intro going so that we guys can start talking to us about sure. your amazing project. Sounds great. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another welcome webinar. We have a very special group with us, and we'll have, uh, instead of a class, it's gonna be more of a talk to today. The topic is inclusivity in the animation industry. It's a very important talk, and we're very proud to be hosting our friends from Rise Up Animation. If you're not familiar with Rise Up Animation yet, today you'll find out all about it from the founders. Frank, Trent, and Bobby will speak about why they started Rise Up, the mission, and how they're supporting black artists, um, and the importance of diversity and inclusivity in the animation industry. Yes. I'm your host, Elizabeth Garcia from Wacom. And this will be roughly a one hour session. Please save your questions for the Q&A. The chat is for us to, to mingle and bond, but the Q&A, um, I'll be looking at the questions later at the end of the webinar and asking Bobby, Frank, and Trent for their answers. For people watching in North America, we do have a couple of specials for you from b and and Annex Pro. Using these codes, you can get um, $100 off at b &H and $50 off on Wacom One and Annex Pro in Canada. And since this is uh, an animation talk, we do want to invite every student that's watching to get paid to create a cartoon with the help of some pros. If you join Cartoon Crunch, Mike Morris and friends will guide eight students through all the shenanigans behind making cartoons in the course of one week. This is, is a paid internship or a paid opportunity uh, so please apply, follow us on social media and check out the details. Um, we'll be paying you to learn and get your first portfolio piece out. Thank you so much for attending and thank you to Rise Up for being here. Uh, take it away, guys. I will mute myself and stop sharing my screen so that you guys can begin your talk. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank and, uh, and hey, do those promotion codes work for us too? I want to get, get me some some Wacom product. Sounds awesome. You already have one, Trent. What? No, how do you know? <laughs> I do. Invite all of your friends for sure. Um, this is a student, a student initiative. For, so if you feel like you're still a student, yes. let Mike Morris teach you something, Trent. We are, we are all lifelong students here. Oh, we <laughs> said it at the same time. We planned that. We planned that. Hey, Frank. We planned it. Planned it. Planned it all. Frank is here? What? Frank I was wrapping up a meeting. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, Sorry no, my no. tardiness, everyone. Formal name, uh, Frank <laughs> Abney. Um, rise up name, Frank Delicious. So welcome, <laughs> Frank. What up, what up, what up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should, uh, going, should we everybody? kick off with a quick intro uh, for yes. all of us? Yes, yeah. do it. You, uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, <laughs> I'm super, super happy to be here. Uh, thank you to the Wacom team for having us. They were one of the first people to reach out when Rise Up got going, so uh, it's very special to us. Uh, my name is Trent Corey. I am from Ottawa, Canada, uh, born and raised there. 
and I currently work at Disney Animation. I've been there about eight years. Uh, I've been an animator, a director, a shorts director, and um, dabbled in story and kind of tried a whole bunch of different things uh, in the industry. So I'm super happy to be here. I've worked with Frank and Bobby for years. We go way back and uh, super proud uh, that we all get to do this together. You wanna go next, Frank? Uh, sure. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, Frank Abney. I'm, I'm from the Bay Area um, and uh, moved, moved to LA and um, I kind of bounced around the industry, uh, been, been working in animation for the last 13 years or so, and um, uh, most recently, um, uh, studios at Disney, Disney's where we all cross paths, um, and uh, went to DreamWorks and, and Pixar now uh, directing um, at Netflix, and um, yeah, Rise Up, Rise Up Animation for me has is, is been um, amazing just to see see the different ways that we can can you know address an issue that's that's been uh, I mean been present since since the beginning you know and, and it's still present now and, and you know but but thankfully you know we're doing what we can to uh, help help people have access and, and be able to navigate and, and tell the stories that they want to tell or, or you know whatever it is you want to do creatively um, you know we're here to try to help facilitate that so um, yeah, I'll pass it over to Bobby. Also, Frank just got his uh, first directing gig in Netflix. Way to go, Frank. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Bobby, you're on mute. There you go. Oh man. I just said pew, pew, pew. And I was on mute and looked like an idiot. Um, but uh, my name is Bobby Pontius. I've been a designer, uh, animator, um, art director, and director on um, with uh, a, a few studios like Disney Animation, um, Blue Sky Studios, Tyco Animation, and now um, I'm back at um, Disney Television Animation, um, developing um, some up and coming projects for like Disney Plus, Disney Channel, and Disney Junior. Um, so that's a little bit in a nutshell about me. Um, and uh, I, it, I'm so uh, happy and glad to um, host everyone and, and glad to have you guys here. Um, thank you for joining us. And uh, hopefully this will be like a fun time just kind of hanging out. I mean, most of our panels are just kind of like, we try to make them as casual as possible, but just kind of like hanging out, um, um, educating and sort of um, closing the gap between um, people that are trying, uh, aspiring artists that are trying to get into the animation industry and like our network of animation veterans and industry professionals that we know, um, that we've met throughout the years. <laughs> um, and so, uh, like I say, I, I met Frank and Trent on Big Hero 6 specifically, because Frank Abney came in as a trainee on Big Hero 6. I knew Trent from Talent Development Program uh, right after Wreck-It Ralph, but we worked on Frozen together. And, um, you know, I mean, just kind of like like-minded dudes of just kind of like, you know, um, we like to help people. Um, it's important to us to pay it forward on, the, um, you know, just kind of whatever mentorship we've received and whatever we've learned to pay it forward to a next generation of artists. And so I think all of us are, are sort of really into the um, mentorship aspect of animation and just kind of taking whatever you've learned and trying to pass it on to the next generation, right? So, um, but, uh, but yeah, let's, let's open it up to, um, what do you, do you guys wanna get into how uh, Rise Up Animation started? What do you think, Trent? Yeah, let's, let's jump into it. And you know what, Bobby, I'm just gonna, for one sec, jump in because um, we actually met on Frozen. Frozen, yep. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I, I came in on Frozen. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, but yeah. Yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we, and like Bobby said, we, we all met on Frozen. We we're in the training program uh, and Frank came right after us. And and uh, I think the paint it forward, th that's a huge theme of, of this whole presentation is, um, is that we, we all like to pay it forward. We all know how hard that struggle is to get into the industry. We've all stood in line at Seagraph or CTN or Lightbox and you know, try to get our reels reviewed and face to face time with people in the industry. So that's what it's all about for us, paying it forward and um, and helping you all out in that way. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, and and I'll just kick off how we got started. Um, you know, really, it just it came from a place of uh, you know everything happening in the world. We first we had COVID, so we're all at home, and then kind of in the wake of um, George Floyd, the murder of George Floyd, um, it just kind of it just kind. Of, I think all of us were left in a place of like, what can I do? What can I do? Like, we want to do something, especially for our industry, and. Um, you know, in the days following, it was just like, well, we're supporting on social media, we're donating, um, we're talking to our friends and listening, um, reaching out to peers. Uh, but what can we do specifically for our industry? So that's when I text uh, Bobby and Frank to just say like, hey, like we, we all give back already in different ways, like through social media or, or um, events. How can, we, how can we create a platform for this? So that's how we got started. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I got a text from Trent um, like late in the night and same thing, exactly what he said of just kind of like, um, there's got to be something more we can do for like people of color. And, um, and then we, um, funny enough, we had been in contact with Frank really recently too, as well of just kind of like asking how he's been doing. He was up in the Bay at, the, at that time and we were kind of like texting back and forth and just kind of catching up. Um, but with, um, with Trent's text, he was just kind of like, we, there's gotta be something, what could I do? Um, he asked me, uh, and humbly of what could I do to help people of color? And it's like, okay, well, um, let's think about it. Um, what could we do? Um, let's, let's beat around some ideas. Let's brainstorm a little bit. Um, and then we, um, we, we sort of try to make it, um, beneficial for uh, like people of color that wouldn't and and students that wouldn't necessarily have those opportunities because like we're we live in LA all of us and uh, we work in the animation industry um, but if you're not here Hollywood just seems so far away like whether you live in India or Egypt I lived in Seattle and it seemed far away um, or just kind of Europe or anything else I just like if you have a dream to uh, be in animation, Hollywood and the industry just seems so far away. And um, we wanted to try to close the gap between um, anyone in any um, far corner of the world and everyone that we knew here in LA in the animation industry and sort of connect them together so that they had access to these um, working professionals, right? And so we did that in, in the uh, way of um, portfolio feedback, portfolio review of just kind of like, hey, um, you know, if you sign up for um, like portfolio feedback sessions, um, we, can, we can review your portfolios. But when we announced it, um, the amazing thing that happened was um, the industry kind of came out in droves, right? Trent, like, and Frank, like, when we announced that we were trying to put together something that get, uh, uh, provided per, uh, free portfolio reviews to people of color. Um, it wasn't just us. It was everybody that we knew of emailing us and just saying, how could I help? Um, I, I just wanted a platform to help. I didn't know what to do. Um, this is a great platform to help. This is up, you know, up my alley. This is my uh, skill experience. So we, we had had an outpouring of, um, um, animation mentors from every department, from every studio, sort of say, how can we help, you know? Um, and we needed it. We needed the help because we had, um, rightfully so, we had a lot of, uh, like, applicants kind of <clears throat> apply for, like, every department um, that we listed. So the animation industry in Hollywood sort of came together to help people that needed the help. Um, aspiring artists that needed the help, so which was really inspiring. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the I think the the, um, <clears throat> the the one thing that that really stood out to me was um, at that that part of it. You know, everyone everyone coming out to help was you know kind of sending me back in time to to uh, just getting getting trying to get into the industry and and um, and just kind of not knowing how to navigate and you know of course you know there, there's different there's a lot of there's a lot more 
uh, possibilities to to reach out to people now, you know, with, with social media and and uh, you know back then it was like, you know, this was like you know 2007 or so. Like LinkedIn was was like my my thing, you right. know, trying to trying to find people and trying to uh, just just reach out and kind of see like you know how how do I do what I'm trying to do and and you know and and there are, there were some that that kind of take advantage you know like you know there are schools that I I spent a year at that was like yeah you're in the right place um, and then I'm like you know I'm, I'm like toward the end of my program and I'm like uh, I still haven't even taken any animation classes yet and you know it's so you know having being able to reach reach out and 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 um, and have contact with people that are in the industry is so crucial because you know it's kind of it, it was it was nice for those people that did come and help me because I'm like uh, I, I feel like I feel like it's one of those things where um, you, um, you you you're getting you're getting a, a bit of a jump start you're getting a leg up you're you're getting you're being able to to skip some of the some of the extra steps because of uh, getting that extra lesson and how to navigate because. You know some of the things that we we've offered is you know not just portfolio advice but sometimes just in, industry advice and i feel like the the business side of things is is just as hard to navigate as it is you know the the artistic side of things and um um it's it's uh yeah it's it was really really nice to see everyone come out to try to try to see how you know how they could help and um you know i i, I think i think the 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 more people out there, the more, you know, everyone's going to take that and, and um, yeah, again, like pay it forward and, um, you know, just kind of keep the, keep everyone growing. And, you know, that's, that's how the, the industry continues to evolve anyway. So. Yeah. yeah. Well said, well said, Frank. I, I think, well, you guys both nailed it. And it's like how exciting it was to see our industry just, just they're waiting on the edge of their seats, just waiting to take action. It's like, as soon as the platform was ready, we had, you know, we have over 500 mentors. And to Frank's point, you know, a lot of the mentors, um, they're not all necessarily artistic mentors. Um, we have a lot that work on the production side and want to share how they enter the industry because everyone has their own unique zigzag, uh, zigzagging path. Uh, so we had just talent from all around the industry that included you know, we, we have over 20 different departments represented. And, and I just think that's great because we all have such uh, unique journeys to where we are. Right. Um, and, and maybe just to get some, because I don't think we mentioned it, but like um, the way that it works is um, uh, um, applicants will apply uh, through the, our Instagram and then we'll get their information. And then we have a whole database of um, applicants and also mentors. And then the mentors will sign up like every week um, for, for um, like an applicant of like who they feel like they can help the most um, and then how many they can take on per week. So there's a lot of autonomy for the mentors. Um, and um, it, it's pretty straightforward than that. So um, once they've sort of designated, like say I, I signed up for Frank Abney I would see his email, I would see his work, and then I would just reach out to him on a Zoom call, uh, just say, hey, um, Frank, you know, um, I'm gonna be reviewing your portfolio. Um, let's set up a call that works best for you. Um, and then we'll meet uh, through Zoom at that point. Um, I'll have your work pulled up um, and we can just sort of talk through your portfolio of like how I can help um, and what I think you can prove in, and then all based on <clears throat> around how um, to help an applicant break into the animation industry, right? Um, because these are all industry professionals. Um, and then we'll just kind of have a call, I'll, I'll call them, and, and me and Frank will have, um, you know, a 30 to one hour discussion on, on, on what the portfolio is like. And, and then, and then, you know, that's, it, it's it we sort of patterned it uh, on you know when everyone goes to like CTN or San Diego Comic Con or Lightbox and everything and they go to those portfolio reviews and they're like five minutes, um, but um, we wanted to provide in this quarantine uh, sort of space where no one can go to any of those events, 
events, um, we wanted to provide that same space. Um, and now in the virtual space, it doesn't have to be 30 minutes or uh, uh, five minutes. It could be 30 minutes, 45 minutes. A lot of um, portfolio reviews last an hour. And a lot of it is just kind of talking. I mean, Trent um, shared some stories about how he was just giving it. It wasn't even, it, it was just giving advice, you know, giving a direction, you know, do you want to speak to that, Trent? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think Bobby's, and also Frank, you get Bobby Pontius as a mentor. That's cool. Look at that. Look at that. That's cool. I heard that guy. Um, no, I, th I think Bobby, you nailed it because, and, and you know what, we, the three of us benefited big time from like CTN, CGRAPH, um, all these conferences. And, um, and we love those. There's such great conferences to go to. Um, but the fact is that they, it can be expensive to travel there. And if you're on the other side of the world, um, you know, not everybody has thousands of dollars to to go to these conferences, get a hotel, and uh, like Bobby said, for a quick review. So um, the whole idea was we want to bring this to your doorstep. Um, so that's great. And, and to Bobby's point about the reviews, I think I think us as mentors take as much or more out of it than uh, than the mentees do. Like I, you know, I've I've been in reviews that last two hours. I've been in ones that we just talk about life for the first hour and I'm seeing a lot of the mentees here in the comments as I'm seeing Yusra and Mikel I saw you there and, and Kylie and a bunch of people uh, jumping in um, thank you for coming it's just we're learning as much we're listening to their stories it's definitely like a safe place and we want to know we want to know like where you're from and and what what the industry is like there and the challenges uh, you fight, faced along the way so um, it's it's been super rewarding yeah, it's not, that's a great point. It's not like, hello, I am this professional and I'm gonna tell you what's what. We would hope to, <laughs> to be a conversation. I mean, like uh, we would hope for it to be like, um, like Trent said, like how, how are things going for you uh, where you live? You know, what's the industry like where you live? How hard is it where you live and your circumstance? And it's, it's not, I don't know. Um, it's a it's a two way street. That conversation yeah. should always be a two way street. What do you think, Frank? Yeah, and I I think same same goes with the with the work as well, and because the the work on a global scale, like for for industry wise, because so much of this industry uh, operates on on you know relationships, and so you know thinking not just about the work, but but knowing who people are, and when it comes to you know folks bringing people on into into um, studios when you're hiring and stuff you know like it, it, it's just as it's just as important um who the person is how they are as it is the work that they make because you know ultimately you want those unique perspectives on on your your film or your show or whatever and um you know and and it's yeah so it's it's good getting to getting to know people like when when i'm when I'm teaching, when I'm teaching, I, I'm, that, that's like the first thing I do in, in my first class is we do a round, a round table kind of thing of um, just like where I have three questions. It's like, where are you from? What got you into animation? And what's your end goal? Or what do you want to get out of it? So then that kind of, you know, it informed me of where you want to go. And, and that's something that, that um, you know, with, with the Rise Up community, like just um informing us you know kind of where you where you want to see yourself where you want to be you know because that can kind of lead the conversation and um also you know because we want we want to be able to help on whatever front you know whether it's you know if you want it strictly about the work then yeah it can be about the work um but um i think i think a lot of people you know just want that access to um to just kind of knowing how to navigate it's, it's not something that we typically learn in school, I think, you know, because uh, I, you know, get, I, I learned a lot of the, about the industry just over the last few years, um, just kind of navigating and, and trying to uh, see how to move. And, you know, it was always a, a fearful thing in college thinking about, you know, even people that, that just work freelance, you know, it's like, man, how do you survive like, bouncing from job to job? Like, how are you getting work, like how are you, uh, you know, how do you reach out to people? How do you, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, so it's, it's good to use, use those, use resources like this or social media or whatever to, to get those answers. And, and we and, and 
hundreds of other people in the industry are, are here to, to, to help in however, however way we can. But uh, definitely those relationships are what matters most. Yeah, and you know what, to, to Frank's point there, it's a great point that a lot of our panels actually discuss this um, very deeply. You know, our panels aren't necessarily technique or, you know, how to animate or how to paint in Photoshop. They are like, Frank, what is your journey? Uh, Bobby, what was your journey from games in Seattle to movies in LA? And also talking about things like work-life balance how to submit a resume. When you go to a festival, how do you get in contact with a recruiter? How do you not annoy them on LinkedIn? That's, that's like a, a hard one. So, uh, so the, the panels have been great because we're just getting to hear all these stories too and, and share that stuff. And like Frank said, it's not necessarily taught in school. Yeah, uh, I annoyed everybody on LinkedIn. I was like, <laughs> recruiters, uh, anybody that would, that had eyes, <laughs> if you want to look at this stuff, can you tell me what, what place am I in? And I, I was just thinking based on, based on what you said, Trent, um, uh, maybe it'd be good to, to, cause I know we, we do these panels and stuff and maybe it, 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 we can have a, a larger conversation later, but, um, uh, maybe we can, uh, briefly talk about like our journey into animation. We have our, we had our brief intros, but like just kind of, maybe digging deeper for, for people just to know just kind of how we, you know, maybe what, what got us into, into this and, and, um, and you know, the, the path that led, led here. I, uh, I can start out because, yeah. uh, because mine, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short, but uh, yeah. uh, when, I'm, I mean, like everyone in this, like everybody in this webinar, we drew from like three years old and, uh, and uh, we drew throughout our lives and up until high school. And then in high school, we kind of come across the question of like, what the heck am I gonna do with this? Who's gonna pay me to draw Batman or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, fan art? <laughs> Nobody, uh, or maybe a few people. But like, I think um, for me, uh, the biggest point of like in art school was finding um, animation. Um, I knew I liked to draw. But it was specifically, I'll say this again and again, specifically Glenn Keane's work on Tarzan made me want to get into animation. I don't know what it was, but dude just changed my... Glenn, if you're listening to this, shout out. Um, he's, he's for sure listening. We know he's no, tuning no, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's listening. He's in he the chat. Changed my life. Changed my life. And um, I say that in jest, but he really did. Um, and so... From that point on, I was like hell bent. Disney animator, if not Disney, some animation at some point. Um, and so I, I, I sort of dedicated my life to that. And I'd never been a good student in high school at all. I've been like a C student uh, in general, and I was happy with that. I was like, C, great. Um, but uh, with animation, it made me want to work hard. Seeing Glenn and hearing him talk about animation of just kind of like, you gotta, you gotta just find the... Uh, that vein popping. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, I never heard anybody talk about drawing that way or even animation that way. So he became my hero immediately. He was like my Elon Musk immediately. And uh, I just followed his path and I just wanted to be like him. And that, that sort of, um, um, long story short, I, I, I won't go through my whole career, but like, that and I will say hang on to your inspirations what initially got you into animation remember what that was because animation is tough it's hard there's a lot of hours it's very discouraging sometimes but in moments of just sort of like I just I just want to give up remember what got you into animation in the first place hang on to your inspirations for me that was Glenn Glenn uh, and um, and his work on Tarzan and um, it, it changed my life. It turned me into a hard worker. And so whenever I get discouraged, I think about um, Tarzan and Glenn and just um, working hard to uh, sort of like put across something on screen that was different, new, and he worked hard for it. And he was so passionate about it. Passion, the passion, I mean like, He's the most passionate person I've ever 
read of in my life. And so hang on to that. Frank. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, uh, um, so I, 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 I got into animation uh, just, I mean, like, like Bobby was saying, like drawing, my, my mom said I was drawing since, you know, I was two or three, something like that. And um, uh, not much better now than I was then. And, but uh, <laughs> um, uh, but it, it was just just the, the the fascination with with movement. I think that was what it what it started out as, and then it became storytelling. It was um, the storytelling aspect was was like, oh my god! Like I, you know, just being I, I, and and it could be just the, that that part of you that connects with the uh, you know storytelling is is an ancient practice practice you know, and and so you know, um, just how we communicate, how we learn, you know, all that stuff. And, and um, you know, I, I think it, it wasn't until the, I think the, the passing of my dad when I was five, it was like Lion King was the one for me. And then Tarzan, Tarzan definitely had an impact. But Lion King was the one that was like, you know, that was the first time I connected with a story that was like, I saw myself in that story and I was, um, you know, I was, I was Simba, you know, I, uh, I was, you know, just, fearful for the, you know, the, the oncoming responsibilities being the new man of the house and everything. And, um, and uh, so seeing that, I was kind of like, like, man, I want to, I want to do that. And, and I, you know, you go through high school, you're the, you're that, that kid that draws, people ask you to draw things. And, you know, I was, I was uh, all the whole Looney Tunes, uh, Looney Tunes character roster, the whole Nickelodeon show roster was like my, <laughs> that was all my stuff. That I would draw, was, you know, I'd, I'd have Bugs Bunny. I'd, I'd mix them. I'd mix it up with other stuff. I put clothes on them. You know, crisscross was was big back then. <laughs> I'd put pants on them backwards and like. <laughs> um, but but you know, uh, when it came when it got to high school and figuring out what to do, you know, I was heavy in, in BMX at the time too. But uh, you know, animation was that that thing that was always there and, and um, you know storytelling. Um, you know, took my, took my, uh, took my time getting, well, I guess not intentionally. I went to a school that wasn't quite what I had in mind, but, um, you know, I eventually went to uh, another college where I got my bachelor's and, um, but it, it was, a, there was a period, um, where like, you know, what Bobby's saying about giving up, like, and remembering what got you into it. Like there, there was a period where I was just like, I don't know if this is the thing for me because it was just I saw people just get it and go and you know people were uh, you know getting opportunities and um and it just wasn't working for me at all I was like I don't know what uh <laughs> I don't know what what I'm doing and uh and, and, and it, it was like it was one of those things I just had to put down for a while and um you know I talked about this before but um um yeah it's 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 it wasn't it wasn't something that came easy and so but remembering remembering why I got into it and knowing that you know I was I was gonna regret it if if I didn't at least try and, and so I wasn't quite ready when I got out of college but um, you know I was able to I was able to get work you know before I graduated so I, I started working back in um, 2007 and um, and then after graduation I started working in games and then um, but I, I wanted to get to feature that was the that was the goal so you know it was my my routine was like waking up at 4 a.m five and kind of you know just working on tests and then going to work coming home and then doing it again and uh you know i, I think i thank my wife for understanding <laughs> you know because uh you know it's not much of a social life you know same thing in college like where everyone was like having fun and all that stuff i was like <laughs> at the computer like you know just <laughs> I have a picture too like young me with hair and everything just like and, uh, <laughs> and um <laughs> but that, that you know that's that's the kind of the thing that you you have to do you know you you want something so bad you, you have to go those lengths to 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 get it and um you know some some it may come easier some may not but you know the, the, our, our journeys are all scattered you know it's all uh, crazy but you know eventually got the opportunity to go to disney met these guys and went over to dreamworks and pixar and so on and, and um 
you know, but, but that, that same, those feelings still come up, you know, those feelings feeling like, like, man, what am I doing? I don't know what, you know, just, uh, it, it always, it always comes up, but you, you know, it, it helps to, to realize that, you know, where you came from and, and, um, and also just like what it means to be doing what you're doing. Cause you know, our, our work doesn't, sometimes it can, it can feel like, you know, it's not as important in the grand scheme of things, but, you know, knowing, knowing how I was affected by stories, you know, when I, when I was little like that, that helped a lot um, for me to, to kind of inspire me to, to want to do something and put my efforts towards something to, to spread some kind of, you know, positivity and, and uh, inspiration, or something, um, you know, no, I'm like, I just, I just want to do it for the money. So. No, that's great, man. No. <laughs> for all that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome frank uh i mean yeah we share all of us share very kind of parallel journeys and i think it's important for us to share those because from the outside it looks like you graduate school and you get a job at disney but you know for most of us for 90 percent of the people we work with it's like a 10-year journey i mean and it's hustle like frank said it even when we started at disney like we're there uh you know in the training program 4 a.m., 5 a.m., weekends. Uh, Frank, I remember on Frozen, it's like you were coming in at 7 a.m., working on a test, doing your day job. It's like the hustle is real. And and um, and that's why I love these guys uh, because we all kind of work to get it um, for that reason. And, and we all had mentors play an important part of our uh, journey on the way. So I'll just touch on that quickly. I, I had no idea what I wanted to do in high school. I did not take art classes at all. Um, I did not draw at all. I, and I hear these people's journeys. That's crazy. Yeah, dude, I hear these people's journeys that like, I knew I wanted to be a Disney animator. I was looking at pictures of Glenn Keane and listening to Phil Collins at eight years old, like Bobby. Uh, no, I wasn't like that. I had no idea. I, I, I felt seen. I know you listen to Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so yeah, I, you know, I was lucky enough to have a mentor in high school, uh, Jamie LaDuke who um, taught a film class and I started filming live action. And my mom was an artist and she encouraged me to like, hey, you know, you, you kind of have this, this act for um, art. Why don't you kind of combine those two efforts? And it never occurred to me until the end of grade 12 to uh, combine those, you know, the love of film and the love of art uh, to become an animator. So I had no idea what I was doing. So if you're in that place, don't worry, that's a lot of us. And like Frank mentioned, it's like a lot of us even go to a, a school for, you know, a different, a different industry and then switch over later on to find the right thing. Um, so I, I went to Algonquin College for, for two years. I did courses there and then made a little film. And I started just kind of learning on the job in the TV and commercial business. And all, there's too many mentors to name because there's, I always chose jobs that I could learn something from. It was never about the money. It was never about like the the what the job represented it was always about how can i learn from this person and um you know in, in 2012 i got a job at disney in the training program and same thing there i had a i had a wonderful mentor amy smead who's been at the studio um 20 plus years i believe and just people wanting to give back and help us uh learn and grow so i've been very fortunate in my journey um to just kind of have the right mentors along the way to guide me because there were, there weren't guidance. I don't know about you guys, but there weren't guidance counselors or information out there um, to really point me in the right direction for uh, animation at all. So it was just kind of like a zigzag all the way here. And like Frank and Bobby both mentioned, um, it's like nights, weekends, you, you sacrifice a lot. I mean, we all made that like five or 10 years of, working weekends, not going out to this party, not, you know, waking up at 7 a.m. on a Sunday to work on a personal project. Uh, we're all there and, and kind of continue that way too. Yeah. I will say that, um, like, building off that trend, that, that was awesome, man. I mean, like, the rundown of your whole career, and like, in, in, into what, how I met you and everything else. But, um, man, you earned it, dude. Yeah, it, for those who don't know, Trent really fucking... Ooh. He hustled. I like that pause. Hardcore. He hustled hardcore. 
Well, I will say that um, on that note, on that note, um, one of the best um, animators at Disney um, to protect his privacy, his name is Tony S. Tony S. was a plumber, right? Wasn't he a plumber like before Disney? He, totally, yeah. Yeah, he was working as an apprentice plumber and, and, um, and made the switch. Yeah, he made a switch and he just kind of worked super hard. And now um, Tony S. is the best animator at Disney for a year now, for a year. And his secret weapon was humility. I mean, he's the most humble guy that you've ever met in your life. He's always down to learn something new. Um, and that what that's, I mean, like everybody in a building of a hundred animators that are amazing, um, we all looked up to Tony. Um, yeah. His secret weapon was being humble and um, always having something to learn, which was amazing. I mean, Tony, if you're seeing this out here, I, I don't know why I salute everybody. Like they're <laughs> a dead and like, uh, horizon. No, it's, I think that's great, Bobby. And it's something, you know, that's why, you know, working with you two with Rise Up, um, I think I can speak for all of us when we always put first it's being a nice person and then hard work. I mean, in terms of like talent or, or anything else, it is just being a good person and working hard. That pays off in the long run, no matter what. That always pays off. Yeah. The humble person is always trying to learn something new. And then the arrogant person is always going like, I know it all, I'm good. Um, so the, the, the growth stops right there, right when they say it. Um, but the humble person always says, like, I, I, I'm not the best. There's always something I can learn. These are the people that are um, luminaries. Um, yeah, like, yeah. This industry, like, it, it doesn't, yeah, the, the, the learning, the growth. Like, if you, if, you think the, if you think the job is where, you know, you get the job and, like, oh, good, I made it. That's, that's the end of the road. Like, Right. Uh, then you get the job and then it's like it's like you're restarting you're restarting the cycle all over again and yep. then and then each project within the job is like restarting all over again and i, I think that's what keeps it interesting you yep. know because I, I feel like um i feel like artists you know they we love love that that challenge and something to, to something to to that we need to figure out or unlock and you know, it's, I think it you know boils down to problem solving yep. and um, you know each project is that and, and each project also brings out that insecurity in me you know I'm like I'm like man you know I look at past work and I'm like dude if I got that now I don't even know like <laughs> but uh, but you know it's also it's, it's kind of it's a dual thing like you get that but then you also it's like your, your confidence grows as well and so you you kind of get to like i know i know whatever i have a sign like i'll i'll figure out a way to do it right but it doesn't mean it doesn't it doesn't mean that i don't go through those same uh <laughs> cycles of, of you know the the mental game and um but uh yeah like the, the growing the learning like it, it's all it, it's all like cyclical it, it all continues and um which is great because I think ultimately, you know, our our end goal of, of just you know connecting with people like that that's however we can continue to be better at that and and, and do more of it is uh, you know it's 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 always going to be there I think and um, yeah. Frank um, Frank Frank and Trent um, I'll ask you guys um, you know let's get into the um, maybe uncomfortable like uh, conversation about like supporting um, uh, black indigenous people of color artists, like at this point, like um, what, are, what are your thoughts on kind of like where we are in animation, uh, just kind of like the status quo and then sort of for our future of just kind of like supporting like uh, black indigenous uh, people of color artists. What do, you, what, do you guys have any thoughts on that, immediate thoughts on that? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I think it's it's something that uh, it's it's definitely it's it's getting better um, to where you know more things are opening up, people are are opening up. Um, I feel like I feel like there's still a, a wall in terms of like 
how to help or even just or even just approaching people you know i think i think there's that thing you know similar to what, what trent uh mentioned was just kind of like the not knowing like what what can i do or what you know and i, I think um even just reaching out to ask you know people how you know uh what, what they need or, or, or if, you know, are you okay? Or, you know, any of that stuff, like sometimes I feel like there's that wall there that kind of prevents that extra something that could be done. And, uh, you know, it, and it, it, and I get it, like, especially when, when tragedies happen, you, it's kind of like a touchy thing. You're like, I don't know, if, I don't know if someone wants to talk about it or I don't know if like, if you, um, yeah, it's just not knowing anything. And, and, um, but I, I think moving forward and, and I think what would help for the future is, is just kind of, um, I guess just being, being willing to, to, to put yourself out there to, um, you know, uh, even if it's just to, to, to say that you're, you're, you're there, you know, for support. Um, cause I think knowing that you have support goes a long way. Um, even if it's, um, even if it's not something that you necessarily want at the moment, if you need your space or whatever, um, sure. I think knowing that it's there is comforting. And um, and I think uh, a lot of groups are popping up, you know, along, you know, aside from Rise Up, there's existing groups out there that help to kind of facilitate things. And, um, you know, there's I mean, social media is a huge, huge point of access for, you know, um, artists and resources and, and, and things to, to help a specific community. So I, I think, I think it's, it's going in a good direction. Do you, um, do you, Frank, do you feel that pressure every day you come into work? Um, some days, some days just the, you mean just the pressure of, of, of um, kind of standing out in, 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 in the workplace and yeah 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 i just um i guess sort of broadly speaking of just kind of like you know with everything that's going on um mm. the blm movement and everything else and um so now i i mean i work with um uh black executives that that feel like okay the onus is on them now the pressure is on them now um do you yeah do you kind of feel that like coming in the work I don't, I don't, I don't feel as much pressure, I think, as I do just, I guess the, um, yeah, it, it hasn't, it hasn't, it, it doesn't, it's not really pressure, I guess. It's more of like, I guess the, the responsibility to, um, you know, make sure I'm, I'm kind of doing what I need to do on, 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 you know, the, the side of like sh sharing things that, um, that can help or, or using my, using my, my art as a way to, to, um, I guess, bring, shed, shed light on, on the situation. Like sometimes I, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't create or I couldn't, you know, just kind of do things that were joyful because, you know, it's like, yeah. maybe I shouldn't because of everything that's going on because because uh, there's that side that, that's like angry and 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 sad at the same time and uh there was a period where i, I had a hard time working because i it's just hard to focus and um so then so thinking if i post something post a, a, a drawing or something that's like light or like you know uh something to kind of lift me up you know i i you know just not knowing how how that will come off because it's like I'm I'm addressing something that's not directly, um, you know, what's going on. Um, even though I even though I address that stuff too, it's like, um, is that all of what I do have to you know? Does it all have to be um, funneled toward that or, you know, because I, I there's that the part of me that feels like um, it's it's just as important to make sure that you're happy or to, to, to lift yourself up out of, out of, you know, this stuff. And, and it doesn't mean that you're ignoring anything, but um, it means that you're, you're kind of using, using your art to, to communicate, you know, how you're feeling, even if, even if you're not 
addressing something directly you're um it's like your your personal therapy like you know it's just you know getting something out getting that that pent up energy out in some way you know having that outlet i think that that's so great frank and and i i i don't know what else i, I can add to that because that was so well said frank except the fact that um like simply put the future of our industry uh it's it will only survive if we have inclusive storytelling and diverse storytelling and um and these guys, you know, Bobby and Frank, they're both telling their own stories right now, their journeys, uh, their leaders in the industry. And, um, you know, what, one of the things that got this whole thing started was, um, was someone at Disney that said, you know, what can, what can the white, what can you as a white colleague do, a white male? And the first thing was like, step up and recognize talent and help these people rise up. I mean, that's, that's why the title of Rise Up came to be is like, we want to help elevate these talents, these diverse stories, and uh, and make sure they come to the top. And now, you know, with Frank and Bobby in the position they're in, the hope is that they will hire diverse talent on their shows and tell their stories, and that um, that people will just get opportunities. So that's that's what it's all about uh, for me right now. It's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, man, that's awesome. And yeah, I'd never heard you say that before. That that's great, dude. I like, I think, um, you know, we can get into supporting, uh, uh, you know, black indigenous, uh, uh, people of color artists. And then, but just kind of the importance of diversity and inclusivity in the animation industry. So like when, um, Trent and, uh, Frank kind of came up with this initial idea to, uh, provide, um, free portfolio reviews, um, to people of color. Um, that was it. I mean, like, really, I mean, it was just kind of like we wanted to, everyone's in quarantine, let's do this. But the ramifications uh, of that are, like, huge of just kind of like, if you give um, sort of a, a, a person of color the tools to break into the industry, that makes way to uh, sort of... Um, have more people break into the industry and then eventually tell more stories that are um, uh, diverse and inclusive. Um, and, um, and have people, uh, more people at the helm of like showrunners or directors or anything like that. But like it all, it, it, it's sort of like a, a long-term goal and a short-term goal. Like once you get people the tools to break into the industry, they will, I mean, people of color will just like go, go ham, you know, yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll like kind of like run to the ends of the earth to tell their stories. And when they do that, um, they will do that. Um, we can, we can sort of have a more diverse uh, slate and inclusive slate in, yeah. in, and not only animation, but just kind of like in movies, films and everything else. So Make, making that, making that more normal. You know, more of a you know because right now it, it seems like everything you know when you when we get those kind of stories out there that are that are you know very unique to a to a, a, a perspective uh or a point of view you know it, it's um you know it feels like this like it stands out because of how 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 much it's not there you know and and you know the the more it pops up the more we get we get used to it and the more like um yeah just just create just making it a new norm that that all these stories can can exist it doesn't have to be just you know these kind of um these stories that that you know are are, are super you know i think i think specifically in animation you know they, some of these stories were, were always trying to reach such a broad audience which i get it um but then that kind of takes away from the 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 specificity you know and and you know because then when we go specific it's kind of like yeah but what about this group or that group or that group and then so it kind of you know that that purity of that specific you know whatever it is story um you know kind of gets it's watered down so it can spread and, and kind of uh you know reach a, a broader audience but you know some stories it's it's okay if it's not for everyone you know um 
And, uh, but I know, you know, it's, it's a, a business as well, but I think, you know, yeah, the more, the more these different types of stories are out there, the more normal it's going to be. And, and the more, you know, people will check them out to, to broaden their own perspective and, and yeah. you know, get a, get a window into, yeah. um, you know, different cultures and, and different. I mean, and, and then the importance of that is huge. I mean, like diversity and inclusivity in the animation industry. Like if I had seen like a story that was like, you know, Indian American, I'm not even Indian, but like Filipino American or just like a, a Latinx American, just, just kind of like seeing those um, stories or uh, series like presents to me when I was a kid, that's huge. I mean, like yeah. it would latch onto it. I mean, like my heroes growing up were like my, Michael J. Fox and uh, <laughs> Michael J. Fox. That's it. That's all. Because I love Back to the Future. Well, what the fuck? I mean, like, if we, um, if we provide more stories, uh, like on that, like, more heroes, like that are more inclusive, that's huge. I mean, yeah. like, like, people won't, kids won't feel so alone. I'm just kind of like, well, I mean, like, I, I'm not out there representing, or like, they don't even think about that. But like, if we can present those sort of stories to them, that's freaking huge you know i mean if i can present a filipino michael j fox to a, like a young filipino like bobby man what the heck yeah 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 or like uh just I, bobby I, I know you're kind of joking about michael j fox but straight up that guy was my hero because he's canadian <laughs> dude he was my hero for sure <laughs> For yeah, sure. we've never we've never talked about this, but yeah. Hey, uh, you know, I know we could we could go on, I know we could go on and talk about all this forever. Um, but do you think we should jump to some questions with yeah. Elizabeth? Yeah, yeah. Let's... Hi guys. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi, hey, sorry. It's so nice to hear you chat. Um, I have been reading some questions here in the Q and A. A lot of these questions you've already answered, so I'll be skipping through a few, but. Um, there's a lot of interest in your mentorship program, which is apparently now closed uh, or not accepting um, due to a lot of entries. So can, they, they want to sign up and they're asking when, you're, when it's going to be back open. Sure. Yeah, I, I can talk to that really quickly, Elizabeth. And Bobby might be able to pull up um, a screen share. I, I'm not sure if you're still planning to do that, Bobby. But um, so we, we actually we kind of got overrun with how many participants, which was a great problem to have. We have, you know, about 500 mentors, but we, we've, up to this point, we're reaching pretty close to 3,000 uh, one-on-one portfolio reviews that have taken place. Uh, so we decided just to close it for um, a week or a week and a half just to play catch up a little bit um, because we realized that there were some people waiting uh, two to three weeks. So it will reopen uh, probably in the next couple of days. So keep your eyes on it. Uh, but from time to time, we'll just be, you know, I think an attempt to not burn out our mentors uh, because everyone is dedicating hours uh, every week and, and it's already kind of a hard time as is with working from home and COVID. So uh, we will open it again. And, um, and we also encourage all of our applicants to, you know, once they have their first review and, and um, wait about 30 days after that um, to reapply this this should be a thing that you could come to every couple months when you need advice or you have a new portfolio piece to look at. Can you let us know what your mentoring categories are? Yeah, sure. Um, so there's about 20 categories and guys feel free to jump in here. Um, they basically go from the top of the pipeline to the bottom. So we have everything from uh, story, visual development, um, which also includes character design, environment design, and everything all the way through layouts, um, animation, lighting, tech anim, rigging, simulation, modeling. And I, I'm forgetting a whole bunch, but we go through the whole pipeline and that includes uh, music for animation and production and production management. And uh, the only thing we don't look at at Rise Up Animation is uh, we are not accepting pitches or scripts. Um, so we, we try to focus on a craft uh, mostly. No. Also within animation, you know, different medium, you know, like 2D animation, 3D animation, stop motion, so. Yeah, that's great. Excellent. Yeah, 
the 2D animation signups, it's kind of blowing all of our minds because there's such a <laughs> love for 2D. And, you know, it's probably because of things like Klaus or, and I know Spider-Verse isn't 2D, but just that love of uh, 2D medium, we've had a lot of submissions for that. Do you have plans to connect with local markets outside of Hollywood, like San Francisco, Chicago, New York, to expand or expand to um, other fields like motion design? Uh, Christopher Bernal is asking. Well, we've, um, so we, we haven't expanded uh, in that sense. We do have motion design mentors. Um, I know there's been some interest in games uh, mentoring. Uh, so far, we are only focusing on animation, and that's that's mainly because um, that's where all of our focus is, and that's what we know, and that's where our friends and mentors um, are from. With that being said, I you know I hope you know, I hope in every industry like games or motion graphics that there's something similar to rise up where the industry kind of steps up and says, hey, we want to we want to help mentor um, these folks. There's many people watching or listening in from outside of California and different regions, and they're asking similar questions to this one. Um, somebody mentioned they were hesitant about joining the industry because of the distance. This is the same for a lot of uh, our listeners. What advice would you give uh, to people who have to relocate and be in a little bit of a limbo before they find an opportunity? Do you advise that they move? Do you advise that they don't? Is it says just uh, your advice to stay and seek remote work? Um, I, I would, um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think if I were, the way that I've seen it um, is because um, the artist community is so international now with IG and artisan and everything like that, um, I would just continue to post um, work um, like on our art station or IG um, and that's sort of international too, right? Um, we just, you know, we met with Marvel last uh, two weeks ago and, you know, um, there was a th freelance artist from Germany, you know, just kept posting her work and, um, you know, eventually you know, I'm sure it wasn't easy, but like uh, she ended up being a full time at Marvel. So um, I think um, I think the biggest thing for me as an artist would be to just keep posting work, keep posting work on IG or on ArtStation and uh, just getting your work out there. Um, and then, you know, it doesn't have to be the, you know, I mean, um, your work in the beginning can be a little bit kind of you're still learning, but you know as you grow, just keep posting your art, keep posting your art, um, and people will see it. I mean, I mean we're living in an age now where like you don't have to deliver anything, but like anyone can see your art anywhere from around the world, right? So um, I would just if I was trying to break an industry, I just kind of the goal would be to just kind of like keep posting stuff to my social media right? Uh, my Instagram, or my uh, art station. And, um, and yeah, Bob, Bobby, I might just add to that too, that because um, I know there's probably a lot of international folks looking into the visa situation now. Oh, and yeah. I'm, I'm currently on a work visa. And, you know, to be honest, it's a difficult situation right now because of the political climate and, and many other factors, uh, unemployment in the U.S. There's, there's lots of factors. But don't let that bring you down because this is an international industry now. There's, if you're in Canada, there's work on all these shows. If you're in the UK or, or Australia, or you can travel to Asia, anywhere, there's work on Netflix series, there's work on Disney TV series, you know, this, there's work out there. So you don't need to be in LA to get that experience. If, uh, so don't let the, the visa situation bring you down. There, there are there are stepping stones that you could take to get here eventually. Um, and what, I, and they, what were your stepping stones, uh, Trent? Yeah, sure. My, I mean, my, my, and you know, all of us had to relocate to LA. Uh, my stepping stones were starting in uh, TV and working in commercials and, and trying to like just get enough experience in Canada before Disney would take a second look. And, and that's, um, you know, that's all of us just trying to gain that experience. 
Um, but these days, you can get that high level work outside of LA. You do not need to be here. In some, in some cases, it's freelance too. Hmm. Thank you guys. Do you guys have any other great networking groups that you may recommend to our viewers here? In the well, animation industry or in the creative industry, they're looking for advice from you on great networking groups that you would recommend. Well, we, we love working with, you know, we, we've worked with a few already and we're trying to collaborate as much as possible. There is, there's WIA out there right now, which is uh, Women in Animation. Uh, there's Latinx, which is a great, great organization. Uh, there's Black and Animated, another fantastic organization. They're out there. Um, Frank had mentioned them before that there's, there's a lot of resources out there and communities. And even now we have the Rise Up Discord channel, which um, is for people of color coming together, um, looking to um, you know, learn from each other about the industry. Yeah. yeah. There, there's also, um, there's a Black Women Animate, um, which uh, that is another another shortage. Like, you know, I, I hardly ever worked with anybody um, that was, you know, just black women in, in animation. So there's a, a group there as well. And um, I think a, a lot of these a lot of these groups are, um, you know, they have they have a social media presence as well. Um, you know, so even even if you don't know if there's a group for a specific thing, like. You know, a quick search definitely, um, you know, could could bring them up. But um, you know, if there if there and if there isn't something um, specific to to what you're after, um, you know, maybe you can you can be the one that that starts it, and because um, you never know how many how many like-minded people there are who or, or not not like-minded, but just um, that that can fit in that category with with what you're you know what you're looking for. So. Um, Yep. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, guys. Um, did any one of you feel like you had to change your natural artistic style to get a job in an industry, in the industry? Did anyone have to change mm -hmm. what they're drawn, naturally drawn towards? I, I felt like I had to adjust, like, the things I wanted to animate and stuff. Like, just, you know, with, with um, and this, you know, is specific to animation, but, um, you know, it, that, it wasn't really working, you know, that, um, you know, when I, when I tried to, cause I was trying to compare, I was, I was trying to look for what other people were doing and thinking that that's what I needed to do to get in. But then once I stopped doing that and just animated what I wanted to animate, um, you know, it, I think the whole, everything kind of changed because um, I think, I think the studio started to see something different. There was like a different, that that spark that people would mention that I had no idea, you know, what that was, and it was basically like putting yourself into into the work that you're doing, so you create something that's more um, more unique to who you are, and telling 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 your story through your work. And I think I think that's um, yeah, I would I would stick with that, and and you know, um, I think these guys, uh, maybe Bobby or you know, you guys could speak more to the the drawing side of things. You had that. You had that great bit, uh, Frank. Of um, and I always remember this too because I've been there before. Of like you were doing animation test after animation test, and then you talked to somebody might have been Victor Devone, and he's just he told you to just say something personal, and then you did it. And um, in your animation demo reel, that was something that stood up for him. And I'm, I'm sorry if I yeah, thinking. it was no, no, yeah, it, it's. Um... Yeah, it was, it was, it was, a, um, I got, I gotten feedback, um, that there was this spark. I mean, and there, there's something like I, I would, I would consistently get the feedback that, um, you know, it can animate well, but it's there that something was, was missing. Like, you know, you're looking for, um, looking for this, this type of, uh, this, this, they kept saying spark. And I was like, it's like, what is that? What is it? <laughs> what is this thing? And um, and uh, kind of dealing with with the lot, with my dad that kind of surfacing up at at a, at a time when I was trying to get in the feature, I, I chose to animate something that was specifically about that, and um, and yeah I say uh, I sent it to to Victor Navone who was um, he was like my first mentor in in animation, um, kept in touch and sent it to him he saw it and, and um, you know wanted to show it. 
you know, inside Pixar. And um, that kind of opened the door, even though I didn't start working there until, you know, a little later, but that, that opened the door. And I think it's because of, of that personal thing that I put into it. And um, so, yeah, that was, that was the, uh, the, the, the spark. The spark was, was, was being, putting yourself in there. And I, I think the same goes for drawing as well. Cause I mean, yeah, there's going to be styles yeah. for different shows and, and films and stuff, but um, you know, I think, uh, and again, you can speak more to this. I think there's, there's storytelling in, in your, your drawing as well. Um, yeah, Frank, I mean, like I, I yeah, I think we're at one eleven, but like, I think um, I, I, I agree with you a hundred percent of like, whenever, I um, look at portfolios. I always encourage young um, artists, aspiring artists, to put more themselves into their work. Um, not necessarily what the studio wants to see, but like your life experience. Um, and just like things that you went through, the people that you know, the friends that you know, your culture. Like, I wanna see that, man. I mean, like, I wanna see, I wanna see more diverse and inclusive stories. And like, you know, I mean, just, like if you're at the further ends of India or the Philippines, I mean, like I, I wouldn't encourage you to go, but what would Disney want to see in terms of like a Frozen 3? Fuck that. Like, I, I just like, what is your, what is your uh, culture? What is your experience? What is your story? Who are the people you know? Who are the characters that you surround yourself with? Who are your friends? And what are the adventures that you went through? Um, that's the, the coolest thing in the world. I mean, like, yeah. you know, the world has a million Frozens, but... Um, yeah, that's what I was about to say. They already have people that, you know, yeah. that, that's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's works at Disney. But, like, I, it just, like, I, I think, like, I... If you, get a, if you get a text from PR, I'm sorry, PR. But, like, I, I, uh, I think my biggest thing is just kind of learning about new cultures around the world, um, learning about you, um, and um, the biggest thing that any art director or director wants to see in a portfolio is like knowing about you, you know, not what you want to see, uh, not what you want the um, like studio to see, but like loving, uh, like uh, uh, presenting uh, to the world, like who you are, where you grew up and those kinds of things, I think. Uh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, we always, and, and talent, you know, the, the skill level, we always say that at some point, you know, everyone gains the same skill level, but what's going to make you stand out? And, and, you know, both Bobby and Frank have unique backgrounds and, or things they experienced. You know, Frank mentioned BMX biking. He can do a backflip on a bike. Maybe one day he'll bring that to one of his movies, you know? And uh, so it's, it's even like just life experiences, where you've traveled, what you, what your hobbies are. Um, everything, everything makes you special. And that's even, you know, a studio like Disney, even for that job, like they're looking for um, what makes you unique. Yeah, exactly. Frank didn't mention that. He, I'm seeing the comments go, what? I've seen him in a video do a backflip on his BMX. <laughs> uh, that, that's my other, my other passion outside of animation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Bobby can do windmills, break dance, yep, break dance. turns a yes. hockey pro. <laughs> And then friend can chop down a tree in like two jumps. <laughs> Remember when you went to the uh, Renaissance Fair and then you, you like killed on the, uh, oh wait, nope, never mind. It wasn't. Nope, there. not me. Different. That was a different <laughs> Indian guy. Sorry. We wanted the link to the video, guys. They're asking for it. Oh, to the backflip or the. Oh. <laughs> uh, or, or the um. other the other white Here, kid. Let me, <laughs> yeah. If you, let me, I'll, you guys talk, I'll, I'll grab it. Whoever can you believe, <laughs> can believe that you did a flip? Because I did, I'd never seen that before. But uh, no, We have a question from the audience that I find interesting because we haven't touched on it from Angela Sanchez. Can you touch a little bit of intersectional identities? Uh, they're noticing that there aren't any women of color or queer, uh, queer people of color speaking on this panel. And they're wondering if you have mentors representing those groups at Rise Up. Yeah, we have it. We have it. We have a lot. Yeah, I mean, um, we um, we started we started uh, Rise Up as like a three 
uh, a group of friends and we thought it was going to be small. We didn't think it was going to be big at all. So, I mean, honestly, um, it was just kind of like three friends just kind of going, hey, what could we do? But um, Trent can speak to this as well. Uh, just like since we've grown, there's everybody, every mentor from every spectrum of uh, just sort of like a female, male, a, a transgender, uh, uh, LGBTQ, everything else. But like for, from us in the beginning, it was just us, you know, but, um, you know, uh, as we grow, what do you think, Trent? Like as we grow? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think that's awesome. And, and it's a great point that um, this is a good time to highlight our mentors is that, yep. like Bobby said, they're from all over the world. But when we get mentors reaching out to us, a lot of them are saying, hello, I'm a black woman. I work in stop motion and mm -hmm. I want to, um, I want to inspire and, and bring up that next gen generation or I'm a queer animator. I work at DreamWorks and, yep. I, and I need more of this in the industry. Um, yep. So a lot of these people that are mentoring uh, are reaching out because of that. They want to see more people that represent um, them. Yeah. Many times, many times of just kind of like, um, um, you know, my um, like good friends that I know now are just like they reach out to us like I'm a, uh, black queer uh, director in animation and I want to represent for you know um, you know people that kind of like feel like me look like me and I'm like that's awesome I mean like really 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 it's a testament to the industry how diverse the industry has become and how much um, they want to reach out to Rise Up Animation because they want to represent um, and they want to represent for underrepresented voices, you know, and I mean, yeah, it, us were us because it started small, but, you know, we're open to anybody. Thank you, guys. Yeah. What role will unions or lack of them play in the animation industry addressing hiring underrepresented talent? Well, I, I can I can kick this off uh, briefly and try to keep it simple is um, you know, Rise Up is focusing on that kind of uh, systemic issue of getting information out there, um, you know, from the ground up. And it's up to the studios and the unions to do the same within their walls, because we can only do so much, you know, we, like Bobby and Frank both mentioned prior to this, is we want to help give uh, people of color the tools, uh, minorities the tools to rise up. And I think all the studios, I can, you know, I don't want to speak on behalf of them, but they, we're seeing a change. We're seeing them hire um, uh, chief diversity officers and 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 hiring talent and promoting talent and and the unions too. And and that's going to be up to them. But um, for us, the focus is like just get get your foot on the door, get get your work seen, get face to face time with industry pros. And the studios will have to take it upon themselves. Uh, and there's tons of employees working within passionate people like us, they want to see a change that are making that happen. Yeah. Wonderful guys, thank you so much. So we're at 118 and I know that we agreed on a one hour webinar and the talk is very interesting, but you guys gotta go eat lunch. And uh, you do have a lot of um, Instagram lives and other sessions on your own channel where you can continue to have these conversations. I know that we have I have right now 68 questions for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to email them to you because you, there's absolutely no way we're going to get through them. Um, but there's a lot of, a lot of interest in the subject and uh, I may have to invite you back to do part two. Oh, but, what, can we do lightning round for like 10 minutes? Is that weird? Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Like 10 minutes? Let's do it. And then, and then you know, if, if um, you know, we're happy to come back and just answer questions uh, one day. So just let us know. Awesome. Is there room for writers in Rise Up Animation? Yes. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning round. Uh, well, actually, we're not looking at scripts. Uh, but, you know, this is something that, that we can give industry advice on for how to go. Um, unfortunately, Rise Up cannot, I know this isn't lightning quick, but they cannot uh, we cannot currently look at pitches or or um, or show ideas uh, for legal reasons. Right. But beyond that, 
Um, we have had a lot of people um, on, in the industry reach out that are writers that aren't going to look at scripts, but they can give advice to up and coming writers in the film industry, TV industry, animation industry. So, with the caveat that obviously that we can't look at scripts. Awesome. Several people have asked, where can they see Tony's work? Tony Smith is not online. That guy oh, is in post. Oh, yeah, in post is Tony. <laughs> you'll, uh, so you'll never, uh, yeah, really quick. Uh, Tony is a ghost. Uh, you'll only ever hear of him if you work at Disney. Uh, he's the best and the nicest person in the, in the world. And um, you can, you can, if you've got a quick eye, you can recognize his shots in the movies because they're so darn good. Awesome. Can you talk about ways of accepting feedbacks and ways to give feedback? Uh, Trent, yeah, uh, well, just, um, I think giving feedback is, is just, uh, kind of being humble and just, uh, just sharing what you've learned along the way. I mean, every, every note I give comes from a place of, um, you know, those notes come to me in a, in a prior situation, um, that, that kind of like ongoing mentoring pay it forward. Gonna, that that's great because like Trent was recently at Anim Soup on um, on Frozen Two and supervising Olaf, so I'm sure you have to do that like a hundred times a day. Totally. Yep. What if somebody wants to become a mentor for Rise Up? How do they? Get, what's the process like? Just email Rise Up Animation. Starts, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> email like, um, yeah. They can they can email Rise Up Animation at gmail .com and um, and. We're, we're accepting mentors there. All right. In your opinion, does the work speak for itself or is it a mix of personality and the work in your field? It could. Yeah, I, th I, th I think both because you, the work is, the work is going to get you in for the interview and then the interview will get a, get a, get a feel for, for who you are with the work. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Me too. What's the good way to advocate through our art? There are plenty of issues to be fixed, but how do we make our voice heard in a sea of distractions? An anonymous attendee wants to know if you have an opinion. Advocate through art. Advocate through art? Um, hmm. You gave plenty of examples earlier about how you can insert your own culture and your own traditions and your own identity in your art. That's advocating for your people. Yeah, yeah your your origin i guess that's one way well and i would yeah. say i would just say um to add to that is persistence i mean all of us is just like keep posting like bobby mentioned keep keep advocating keep uh, letting your voice be heard and and keep finding ways to to get it out there is the rise up mentor program competitive no no, no, it's not competitive. It's, 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 um, it's a, 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 a few volunteer mentors that are dedicating their time um, to, in an effort to just help an aspiring artist um, uh, just improve, you know, not competitive at all. I, I mean, like, if anything, um, I think people like, <clears throat> Like depending industry professionals, depending on their work schedule, I mean, they would be happy to sign up for more and more. Um, but um, we're all happy to help, and um, there's no competition. What would you eat the competition? And, well, and and if it's coming from a mentee perspective, we take anybody, anybody that is interested in getting feedback. There's no guideline. You do not need to be a college graduate or yeah. anything. It is as long as you're 18 years or older. Um, you can apply and get something looked at. Even if you're just, it could just be a hobby you're right now and you're interested. You Maybe you just love Lion King and you want to I mean, I mean, it's crazy too, because like some of these um, mentors that are volunteering are heroes of mine. And I'm like, ooh, I want to sit in on those, like uh, interviews or feedback sessions. But, um, but yeah, the industry kind of, like we said before, industry kind of came together, really, really came together um, to help, um, people uh, improve in, and rise up in the sort of industry, so. Thank you. How, in your opinion, how should one communicate on their portfolio, profile, or resume that they value their culture and the concept 
of diversity and inclusiveness? I think it shows up in the work, honestly, like, like what, what you're, what you're doing, like, cause you know, when I'm, when I'm looking at, uh, when I'm looking at work or even like, you know, sometimes people will, people, when they're, when they're applying, they'll use their Instagram link and, you know, I can see the, the recent stuff, but I'll, I'll scroll and, and I'll, I'll, you know, looking at everything, I think, you, you know, you can get a sense of what, what's important to them, I think. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And just, I just really quickly, I, I just kind of double back on that is that um, the work speaks for itself in multiple different ways. Uh, most of the time, you don't need to show a, um, a diploma or a degree. You, you just, it's all portfolio driven. Like Frank said, once you're in the door, it's just kind of being that person that they want to work with. Uh, so art speaks for itself. By the way, um, to answer any question, degrees don't matter in animation. Zero. We get a lot of questions still uh, uh, on that, but like degrees don't matter. It's well, and the only time the only time it might matter is if you're looking to get a green card, um, oh. like com coming from a different country. But Bobby's right. For the most part, even if you're trying to get a work visa here, um, experience and art uh, matters. Mm, that's a great point, though. Yeah, I just kind of like blanketed same in it, but like, I think, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some people may need a school, um, a student visa like myself, that's how I came to the U.S. from Mexico. Right, right. Mm. So um, we've seen many examples of more inclusiveness, such as the Abominable, Abominable by DreamWorks and the upcoming Raya, The Last Dragon by Disney. Um, are there any future studio projects coming up that you've noticed that highlight different traditional values? Well, we, we have uh, the, the last film I worked on at Pixar was Soul. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, it's planned to be released back in June, but um, November, November is, is the new, the new time frame. And, and um, you know, it'll be, it'll be the first film there that was you know, highlighting, highlighting a, a black character in the, in the forefront and, 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 you know, just in general, you know, the, the, the cast of, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a pretty diverse cast, but, you know, the main character and, and, you know, his family and, you know, so on, you know, we got, um, it's already been released now, but we have Jamie Foxx voicing the main character and we have Questlove in there, Angela, that's like, it's, it's so many, uh, and, and it's, and it's not just, a black character is you know there it's um there, there's more there's more involved in it that i you know i can't say but um well i don't work anywhere here i'll give you the link to the movie you can watch no i'm just kidding <laughs> um, but <laughs> no but uh yeah, Frank, yeah that, that's soul <laughs> frank like this movie looks so cool and it's pete doctor and that was frank's yeah, last project yeah. to fix her so cool yeah and, and 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 it was the first one you know bringing bringing up um uh diverse talent you know it's you know we had uh, uh kemp powers um who is who is a writer you know he's a um, black writer uh, from new york he he became co-director with p doctor on there as well so um you know helping to uh to, to bring that authenticity and myself and and many other uh black employees that serve a part of a cultural trust that you know kind of brought together you know, they, these, the experiences in the film and, and things to, to kind of bring more, more truth to it. And, yeah. you know, there's, yeah, hey, I don't want to dive into the film, but yeah, that'll be out in November. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, will the Rise Up program continue after the pandemic gets better and you guys have to go back to the office? People are asking in the chat. Elizabeth, yeah, that's a good question. I think for all of us, um, and this is where I think all of us kind of lose a bit of sleep over this, is how we have to make sure Rise Up is not just not just a, just this little moment in time, but it's it's definitely a movement. And and um, we're we're trying to do everything we can to ensure it's a long term success. And that's that's things like creating it as a nonprofit, um, working with people that want to help set up scholarships. Um, there's and working with other programs like CGMA or WIA or CTN um, to um, to keep it a movement and not just uh, not just a quick answer to uh, the Black Lives uh, movement uh, that just happened. 
Yeah, I mean, I, 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 to Trent's point, um, again, animation industry coming out and um, supporting this kind of movement. So we've had numerous organizations of, um, coming to us and saying, hey, we'd like to provide, um, you know, free classes, you know, or free hardware, you know, for, um, you know, for Rise Up Animation um, uh, applicants. And we, we haven't really necessarily um, ironed out the deals, details for that, but um, they're willing, everybody is kind of willing to help in, in support of our movement. So um, we, we're, we're still ironing out the details on uh, how we can, how we can um, uh, sort of disperse that sort of uh, uh, rewards and sort of information, but, um, our main goal really is to uh, sort of pr provide um, the resources, education, and information to um, aspiring artists that don't necessarily have um, those resources on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, um, we're here, we're in LA, we understand our privilege. Um, but we understand that someone halfway around the world, an artist halfway around the world, doesn't have that at all. And uh, we're trying to close the gap of just kind of like, here's the people we know, here are the resources we know, we can connect you with those resources so that your dream of working in the animation industry or working in movies becomes closer uh, day to day. Uh, every day it can become like a reality. Um, so that, that's sort of our mission. We've all been there. We've all felt like it was like a pipe dream and we can't even imagine someone coming from like a far corner of the world. But if we can connect them with an artist um, who, who is in the industry, then that, that can change, change uh, everything for them. And we hope to be that change. Uh, you guys are doing great. Thank you so much for all the work that you do. We've seen you um, for quite some time since we started talking to you. We're big fans of the movement. A lot of our community has been finding it very useful. Just reading the chat and the questions here, you guys are doing um, a wonderful, wonderful uh, labor of love. So we thank you so much. Um, and welcome, we work a lot with artists all over the world, especially in Latin America, uh, in this region. And I'm pretty sure those watching, tuning in, um, just hearing your stories and your message uh, must be very, very rewarding and motivational. So thank you for joining us today. It is 1.33, I see Frank is already eating. We need to go and go uh, have lunch. And um, if you have any parting messages, any sort of uh, advice, I know that here in North America, back to school is almost around the corner or not because COVID, but um, give me a nice send off message, each one of you, we wanna hear your last thoughts. Sure. I'll I'll kick it off. And I'm so glad Frank started eating because I'm always the one to leave the conversation because I'm hungry or have to go eat. Um, so Frank, thank you for not making me feel like the only one. Uh, my parting words are, well, first of all, thank you for joining us. I'm seeing like tons of familiar names uh, in, in the chat go by uh, from our Rise Up community, which are now our friends and we get to like hang out with and talk to. Uh, so thank you for coming. And uh, I'll just, I'll just leave with um, just just be nice and work hard. Uh, that pays off in the long run. For some of us, it might take a year. For others, it might take 10 years. Um, just be nice and work hard. Thank you. Be, yeah, be, hum be humble. You know, this, this don't, don't take yourself too seriously. You know, all, this, um, all, this, all this work, you know, it, it, it goes, it, 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 it travels, you know, and, and so does that, you know, what Trump was saying, being nice and, and humility goes along with it you know it's um uh, yeah you never know who's 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 watching you and who's being inspired by you so yeah yeah um i spoke with um a mentee last week um uh, she was from uh delhi india and like i think our parting words were like um she spoke to me honestly and she was just kind of like well um do you is it honestly worth pursuing you know like coming to the States or working in animation or, you know, kind of uh, like pursuing that dream or working in animation, wherever it is. And, um, and I was like, of course it's worth pursuing. I mean, like, dude, it's just like, it, it's, 
it's uh, a, I would rather just you not be one of those woulda, coulda, shouldas. Just like, of course it's worth pursuing. Do everything that you can and educate yourself on what it takes to get there, whatever it takes to, you know, educate yourself on the craft of it. Like, of course it's worth pursuing. I mean, like I, I, um, I, yeah, again, it's just kind of take whatever opportunity that you can and if you really, really, really want it, I mean, I mean, I'm not even being uh, 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 just kind of like overly optimistic, but like, you might as well try, you know, and, and, and it's better than and just giving up now, you know, uh, I, it's just like, I'm going to still have that in my kids, my cousins, my relatives and anything else, but um, of course it's worth pursuing, of course. Um, and so you should always try to pursue it. Um, but- uh, Well said, Bobby. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Oh, well said, man, just, yeah, you don't wanna look back on that. You wanna just get it- I wanna look back and just kind of be like, I could have tried it, didn't do it because I didn't wanna try it. I mean, like, Trent's a good example, man, I mean, you know, but, uh, and Frank's a good example too, as well. I mean, just kind of like cards stacked against them. And, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't necessarily happen for people like us in our situations, but um, they kept at it. And, you know, it just die trying, man, die trying. That's what I say. I don't know. Die that's, trying. that's a great parting message, Bonnie, I think. We should all leave it all on the table. We should all fight till the end. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think you guys got the message. It's worth pursuing everything that you're very passionate about. It's better off trying than not being able to sleep at night because you didn't even give it a shot. Yeah, totally. And Bobby's going to get sued by 50 Cent for saying die try. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, let's, let's end the webinar so that we don't get sued. Thank you so much, guys. I'm going, Thank you. To, um, I'm going to leave the screen um, open again so you guys can see my cartoon crutch invitation. Oh, I'm unable to share it. Peter, please share it. I'm unable to share my screen. But I do want to remind all the students watching us, if you want to get paid to create a cartoon with the help of some pros, join our cartoon crunch challenge with Mike Morris. You will get paid to work in teams of four and create a one um, 40 second cartoon in about two weeks. Um, so go to our blog and learn more about it and go also follow Rise Up Animation on their Instagram because they're always posting amazing inspirational content. There it is, that's a slide. Please go sign up for Cartoon Crunch if you're a student. We would love to, to see your portfolio. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Trent. Thank you, Frank. You've been wonderful. So Thank you. And uh, don't forget that Wacom is your friend. Keep us in yes. the loop. We would love to do more work with you guys. Nice. Thank you, Thank Elizabeth. You. Bye, Bye, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Hey. Bye. Bye. Bye.